Hey you and welcome, my name is Mike, and in this old video, you know, let me ask you a question, if you would be so kind. You ever uh, use Yelp, you know, to review restaurants and uh, other eating establishments? Well, have you? Just what I thought. See, this is a funny story. Funny as in uh, interesting, not funny as in Nisla. Maribel Ramos was an army veteran, and in 2013, she disappeared in California. So what's that got to do with Yelp? Well, Maribel's roommate began to post some things on a tread on Yelp that were a uh, little bit suspect. Let's talk about it. Have a goo! So in this case, we're going to Orange County, California. Which, by what they show of it on TV, seems like, um... Well, a nightmare. But I guess on the side that's not shown on TV, in beautiful Santa Ana, that's where Maribel Ramos was from. She was born in 1976 and arrived in Santa Ana as a baby, her family immigrating from Mexico. Maribel was a real tomboy from a young age, and she turned a lot of heads. And as the oldest, she would take care of her younger siblings as their single mother worked two jobs to provide for the family. Maribel had big dreams straight to the top. You know, she wanted more than what she grew up with. You know, she wanted to chill with the real housewives of, um, I don't think anybody wants to chill with them, but she wanted, you know, the nice house, the nice car, the sunny life, and she was prepared to work hard to get it. Her long-term goal was to become a police officer. After high school, she worked security at a local supermarket, and she realized that to become a cop, a degree would be very useful. So she needed money, and she joined up. In August 2001, she became Private First Class Ramos. Or drillers citing a sharper than expected decline in drilling activity. So you can find one plus for every minus, but at least you are seeing some pluses in there, and uh, that does help to stabilize things. And the uh, futures. Hey, open uh, my mic. Yes, the well, and the futures, as you open your mic, Ed, you'll uh, find out that. So, all right. Ray, thanks. We're going to have to break in here on WOR at uh, 8 50, 10 before 9 o'clock because of what appears to be. Some sort of uh, an explosion. As you can imagine, 2001 was an uh, interesting year to join the Army. Launched the opening salvo of Operation Iraqi Freedom. The United States has already had a busy day attacking Iraq, and the war hasn't even formally begun. She ended up in Iraq, saw a fair amount of combat in the desert, and reached the rank of sergeant. And when her tour ended, she signed right back up, re-enlisting. She would remain in the army until 2009, when she had done her bit, and now she wanted to move on with her ambitions. She then enrolled at California State University, Fullerton. Now, Maribel was uh, struggling with uh, post-traumatic stress after her time at war, but school was a great distraction for her. She got a dog and ended up renting a two-bedroom apartment in the city of Orange. She got herself a roomie, an introverted chemist by the name of Quang Choi. Casey Joy butchered the shit out of that, no doubt, as I always do. Casey was from China. He moved from Tennessee to California for a job, and he didn't have many friends or anything like that. So Maribel, being, well, a decent person, included him in many things. Going out, dinners, parties, etc. So all of that takes us to May 2013, when life was good. You know, she had a boyfriend, she was finishing up her degree at Fullerton, you know, getting ready for graduation. She was happy out. She had been living with Casey for about a year at this stage, and they'd become close to a degree. Which, of course, uh, means here comes the fall. And she disappeared. On the 3rd of May 2013, Maribel's sister got a text from KC, her roommate, saying, Maribel never came home the night before. KC, who was, you know, quite protective of Maribel, he'd already called the cops at that stage to report her missing. He said, you know, that the day before, on May the 2nd, he saw her that morning, 
Then KC went off to work, and when he came home, don't know. Orange place to fetch a rose. Oh, this is not an emergency, and I have a roommate, she's 36 years old, and she didn't come home last night. The worry didn't begin immediately. Her family knew Maribel, a warrior, could take care of herself. But when she missed a softball game that night, something she never did, that's when the, you know, looks began. As did the investigation. Nobody had heard from Maribel. Her car was still parked at her house. Her phone and keys were missing, but her toothbrush and purse remained in the house. So it didn't match up, her leaving on her own volition, or something worse. Vanished without a trace, an army veteran and Orange County student has disappeared, and now police want to know what happened to Maribel Ramos. Right now there are very few clues as to what happened to her, but police are saying her disappearance is considered suspicious. This is Maribel Ramos's neighborhood where she was last seen sometime Thursday night between 7.30 and 8.30 p.m. It's one of the details listed on this flyer that family and friends are passing out as we speak, hoping that someone saw something. Her family, friends, classmates, you know, kind of helped in the search. They, they began searching harder than anyone. Maribel was, you know, beloved, well-liked, she was popular. Everybody she knew wanted to see what happened to her, wanted to find her, wanted to make sure she was safe. But weirdly, it seemed like she just vanished. Just never, just disappeared into thin air, you know? The nearby stores, streets, no CCTV, no sign of her. But there was one clue, one kind of, I guess, lead that they had to go on. The day before she was reported missing, on the 2nd of May, she was seen on security cameras at the manager's office of the apartment building. It was Maribel paying the rent. Now that was at about 20 past 8 in the p.m. Roommate Casey Joy said she never returned home that night. But as it's already 8 p.m. and it doesn't look like, you know, well, from how she's dressed, doesn't look like she had plans to get up to much. Interesting. The police had to start conducting interviews with anyone and everyone they could think of to see if anybody knew any anything about Maribel. You know, and as the hours and days started evaporating, you know, missing persons case, homicide case, slowly but surely, as that's nearly always the story. The police first went to speak with her boyfriend, Paul Lopez. You know, you're not under arrest, anything like that? Oh, okay. yeah. it's been, like, exclusive. It's just been, you know, dating. Okay. Yeah. You date other people, too? Me, yeah. Okay. You don't know if she dates other people or not? I don't ask them. It turned out that Maribel actually had a few fellas in her life. She, in fact, had a date planned for the 5th of May, Cinco de Mayo, with a military photographer she met online. And as the investigation continued, right, the police learned that over a week before she disappeared, Maribel had made a 911 call. She wanted to make sure it was on record and in the call, you know, she was afraid. But she was afraid of what she might do. Hi, Orange Boy. Hi, it's not an emergency, but I just, um, is it recording? Is there a what? Is this conversation recording? Yes, every conversation is recorded. I'm just, like, calling so that you guys know that if something happened, I did it because I was trying to defend myself. All I'm trying to say is that I'm warning you. Um, honestly, I will fight for my life, and I swear I will, I will kill him. His full name is Juan Chul, but what I understand is Juan Chul Joy. Unusual thing was being next day, Friday morning, she was not here. That's unusual. That's the one I called the police. Her roommate says they gave each other space in their Rose Avenue apartment. But Casey Joy began to worry when Ramos, an Army veteran, missed class six days ago and her on-campus job. He says police searched their home for hours, taking Ramos's laptop and bed sheets, all after he invited investigators inside. And voluntarily, they want a DNA sample that took a picture of my body. Uh, they were searched the house without a search warrant. Um, I'll give them a permission to do it. Go ahead, go forward. She's my only family I have. She's my best friend, and I have to come back. That's all. Casey and Maribel, their friendship was platonic. 
even though it doesn't look it in the photos. And she would hang out with him all the time. He even became close with her family, like a boyfriend would, you know, if he was her boyfriend. During an interview, he explained that the day Maribel was reported missing, reported missing by KC, the 3rd of May, when the police wanted to speak with him that night, they couldn't find him. Yeah, he explained that, you know, on that day when the police couldn't find him, they couldn't find him because he was outside his own house. He was sitting in his car with Binox watching his own front door. Or those the movies and detective movies, somebody was kind of suspect their crimes, you know, or whatever. I want to see who's going to knock him out the door. I just parked the car in the front. I took my notebook, had a binocular in there. You were doing your own surveillance? Yes. Weird. He was also covered in scratches. How'd you get all these scratches on you? We go to Eisenhower Park all the time. Uh huh. Now you, you, you go exactly, you go, we pick up other ponds. Uh huh. We pick up fishing line all the time. You go there, fishing line. Those are from fishing lines? No, 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 no. I'm going to explain. <laughs> fishing lines, yes. <laughs> uh, let me explain, let me explain. He made up some bullshit story about a dog jumping into the pond and he was worried it would get caught up in the fishing lines and so he went in to grab the dog, fishing lines cut him. It doesn't really matter, because the story never happened. The Thursday when Maribel was last seen, they were arguing over rent, funnily enough. They were arguing because KC had just lost his job, therefore he couldn't pay his share of the rent, and Maribel had asked him to ship out. And you know, as it's pretty obvious, Obvious, uh, Casey had the hots for Maribel, so he no no wanna go go. So much so, in fact, that when Maribel once told him he was too old for her, almost 20 years older, Maribel was 36, he was 54, he responded by getting 12 grand, $12,000 worth of plastic surgery. So that's kind of an interesting lead. Uh, he couldn't pay rent, Maribel asked him to go, Pretty obvious he didn't want to go as he was in love with Maribel. But, you know, speaking of going, the police had to let him go. It was still a missing persons case, you know, at this stage. They had nothing on him. Other than he was, you know, a bit shifty. So all that brings us to what I referenced at the start. Uh, Yelp.com. This part of the story is pretty fascinating. I'll be reading out some posts from Yelp, so uh, bear with me. On the 8th of May, Maribel had been missing for five days at this point. A friend of hers, Emily, posted on Yelp. Not sure why she posted there, but the more eyes the better, I guess. A few people, you know, replied, hoping they'd find her. And then one Enrique asked if the police had spoken to the roommate yet. Emily replied, Yes, they spoke to the roommate. He willingly cooperated with the cops by giving them DNA samples, and even allowed them to take naked photos of him. Naked photos to show he had you know, no defensive wounds. He gave up his cell phone to them so he couldn't contact anyone, which he all was more than happy to do. More days would pass, people offering prayers and so on and so forth. Then, for some bizarre reason, Casey Joy decides to start clickety clackily replying to the tread. His profile pic is of him and Maribel, because of course it is. I am Maribel's roommate. She is my BFF and my only family. She is absolutely the best woman I ever met. We had so much fun together. I miss her so much. She always knew that I will give my life for her without any hesitation. Police forensic team searched this two bedroom apartment five time with with police dog. They confiscated a computer, hard drive, cell phone, car, and took several items. They contacted everyone on my phone list and I don't know when I will get my properties back. These are major inconvenience, but all these doesn't matter. I miss Maribel, that really makes me depresses and stressed out big time. The day after Casey posted, a fella named Grant replied saying, Am I the only one finding it odd that this Casey roommate posted here and used past tense to refer to Maribel? We had, she always knew, as opposed to we have, or she knows. And why would she ask him to move out if they have so much fun together? My prayers are with the friends and family. This is very sad. Another user named Tiffany said, Grant, did you create an account just to post that? 
I don't know Maribel or her roommate personally, but why don't we let the police do their job and not speculate on who's responsible for her disappearance until they, at least, have a suspect? Perhaps the roommate is using past tense simply because he hasn't seen her in a while and fears the worst. We will all find out what happened in due time. Until then, we should be focusing on Maribel and not turning this into a witch hunt. That's fair. KC posted again. Emily, I was at the cancel light vigil, meaning this one. Grant, thanks for correcting my grammar. That is my second language and I sittle need help with that from time to time. Yes, Maribel and I are BFF. She is my family. This is big and it puts so much depression and stress to my life. Police came by my house for fifth time last night with big bloodhound. Please do not speculate or make judgment on me. That is already done by others, and I know that everyone is looking at me that way. Honestly, I would not hesitate a second to give my life for Maribel. The next day, he posted again. Carl, I joined FB as soon as it came up. I am there. That was in a reply to a guy asking if you join a Facebook group for Maribel. MB, that's another user. Yes, I love Maribel as a friend and a roommate. That is how we say at night to each other. Good night, Maribel, Maya, me son, mom, and dad. My profile photo. I did it because I miss her. That is one from one night we went out. I don't see anything wrong with that, putting a photo with your friend and or when you love. Emily. KC, I saw you at the vigil. Why do you sit so far away at a distance? Why are you uncomfortable? Cute dog, by the way. KC. Emily, one of Maribel's family member asked me why I was there. Also a verbal threat when I was there. I was uncomfortable that police and or police are assuming or insinuating that I am a suspect. Police and family are assuming that... Dot, 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 dot. I understand that we are all concerned about her. Especially, I am more than anyone else. Yes, she is my only family and I will give my life for her. Is that love? Question mark? People can assume all they want and express their opinion. The next day. I said, Maribel is my only family and BFF. She is. She is my only beneficiary for $250,000 life insurance. And only beneficiary for my bank account. Paid upon death. She knows this. I miss her every second I am awake. Sad face. What? Then another user named Daniel stepped in. This is not accusal, just a personal observation. My condolences firsthand. Casey, ah oh dear. You need to be more careful about what kind of content you are posting, where you are posting it, and the audience that you are dealing with. In this case, it would be very personal information posted on the internet to complete strangers who do not readily know the entirety of the story and have no obligation to come to your defense. I hate to point this out, but the stuff you write makes you susceptible to doubt. I don't see a reason for posting up information about life insurance and bank account beneficiaries. Paid upon death. She knows this, etc. Statements of only family and love for a roommate. You may be outraged that I am pointing this out, but I am just showing you what an uninvolved third party may think of your statements and process of posting. Rant at me if you wish. I understand the need and desire to defend your reputation, as well as your concern for your missing roommate. Just be more careful about who and how you are asking for help. Casey. Daniel. Thanks for good advice. I just can't think straight these days. So at this point, basically all paths lead to Casey. All other exes, boyfriends, yada 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 had been alibied out. Police began to shadow Casey, you know, speaking to him multiple times, even, you know, pressuring him, saying they had found things like blood when they hadn't. At the same time, Casey had no problem speaking with the police sans lawyer. He had nothing to hide. They found nothing at the house, nothing on his phone, nothing on the computer. Maybe he had nothing to hide after all. So, as the surveillance team were watching Casey all the time, they noticed he used the public library a lot. He was in fact using the computers there. Why? Well, the police had his phone, they also had Maribel's laptop in their possession, and he would use Maribel's laptop, you know, himself, so I guess it was the only way to, for him to get online. 
But one time when he went in, an undercover officer followed him. You know, snuck in, snooped around, covert-like. And while Casey was clickety-clackety at the old computer, they, uh, peered over his shoulder. What did they find he was Googling? How about, can a cell phone be tracked if it's turned off? So they needed more, and the police got a warrant to watch what Casey was doing on the library computer in real time. So they could see what buttons he was pressing live on a screen in a van outside. What was he typing away? Let's have a goo. Okay, typing in the old library login. Good man. Oof, Yahoo. Yikes, this really is 2013. Checking the old email, applying for a job, alright, alright, fair play. And then searching a random area in California, in the middle of nowhere. He seemed to be very interested in a specific uh, patch by the side of the road where there was a tree. Any reason why? And once the police arrived there, the smell told them they had found what they were looking for. They found the body of Maribel Ramos. Thanks for coming down here voluntarily, I really appreciate it. Well, if you're gonna give me a ride back to the library, then I'll have to walk. Casey, I think that you have the answers in your heart, well, that you do and that you should share them. Go. Casey was charged with murder. When arrested, he was wearing Maribel's dog tags. He pled not guilty, and his trial began in 2014. Maribel's cause of death couldn't be determined due to decomposition, and there was no forensic evidence tying Casey to the crime. But ah, uh, that computer search leading the police to the exact location of Maribel's body. That was good enough for the jurors who found him guilty. He was convicted of second degree murder. Everyone wants me to apologize, which I cannot apologize for something I have done. It. Kwong Choi Joy or KC Joy maintaining his innocence moments before hearing his sentence. In July, a jury found him guilty of the second degree murder of 36 year old Army veteran Mary Bell Ramos. Ramos, who was about to graduate from Cal State Fullerton, went missing in May of 2013. Her body was discovered two weeks later in a shallow grave in Santiago Canyon. Joy, her roommate, was arrested a short time later. Mr. Joy needs to be put away for life. He is an evil man and a coward that should never be forgiven. Ramos's family trying to hold back tears in the courtroom before the judge sentenced Joy to 15 years to life in prison. Happy that just has been served. Um, it's been it's been tough. Joy's request for a new trial was also denied. While addressing the court today, he continued to say how much he loved his roommate and friend. I miss Mirabel more than anyone. I think about it. I've been here about 440 days in the jail. I think about it almost every day. Mr. Joy sent dozens of letters to the judge declaring his innocence. He also wrote one to Eyewitness News on Sunday saying the same thing. Maybe someday a tree will come up. Maybe I'll just die in, inside the prison. Such a uh, tragic story, you know, of a brave woman who had served in a war. Uh, her life ending in such a pointless way by an obsessed loser. To this day, um, you know, to this day, he still denies he had anything to do with uh, her death. In fact, get this. The computer Google search he did live as the police were watching, he says someone remotely hacked into the computer and was doing it from, you know, remotely that the real killer, you know, just happened to log into the same computer he was at. It was a frame job, mother of God. They searched my apartment about seven times. No DNA, no fingerprint, no signs of foul play or anything. Prosecutors agree it was a circumstantial case. The key evidence, Joy's internet search at the public library, zooming in on the very place where Ramos's body was found. Joy says today he used the public access computer because police seized his laptop. But he says many people use the library computer about Googling the location of the gray site in Majeska Canyon. 
never happened, he says. You never searched for that place, you never zoomed into that place. No, I said, in my assumption, I was set up, straightforward. By the way, uh, one more thing about that Yelp tread. Uh, there was that guy, Grant, he was like the first person to kind of accuse KC, and when Maribel's body was found and KC was arrested, he had to have the last word. Um, I solved this case days ago on this very discussion, and I got bashed for not letting the police do their job? Uh, what? Or I pee to Maribel. Thank you so much for watching. You know I appreciate it. I will see you as always real soon in the next one. Alrighty, take care of yourselves. Mike out.